What's up everybody? Welcome back for part four of this insane monster golf cart build. I'm not really sure what I got myself into with this thing, but if this is your first video to see of this cart, make sure to go back and watch the first three. I'll put links to those in the description. In this video, I'm gonna be building a full air ride system for the golf cart. You may have already seen a sneak preview of it on Instagram or Facebook. I'm a little bit behind on the video, so you'll get to see how I built it in this one. If you want to know where I got any of the parts that I used to build this air ride system, you'll find every single link you need in the description of this video. Also, one more thing, if you enjoy watching crazy builds like this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Alright, let's get to it. The last thing I want to do is cut into a freshly painted brand new tank, but the way I'm going to mount this tank is going to be at an angle like this, which puts the drain at an angle also, and so water, when it accumulates in the tank, is going to settle towards the bottom, obviously, and I won't be able to drain it. So to fix that, I'm going to cut off these mounting tabs here and just kind of rotate the tank to where the drain plug is back at the bottom and weld it back on. I'm assembling what's called a valve manifold. Instead of buying a lot of separate parts like the valves, solenoids, and switches, and then piecing it all together, this manifold comes in a small, compact form already assembled. All I needed to do was thread in some quarter inch, push to connect airline fittings and sensors for the gauges. Super easy, saved me a ton of time, 
and since it's so small, I'll be able to squeeze it into the driver's side glove box. Now for the main plumbing of this air ride system. The Monroe Max air shocks that I'm using are made for 8th inch airlines which are just painfully slow at moving air. And I mean so slow it feels like you're traveling backwards in time. So I found some adapters on Amazon that screw right into the shocks and allow for quarter inch airlines, doubling the amount of airflow. This should make the shocks inflate and deflate way faster. What I'm installing here are two separate sensors on the air tank. One sensor tells the compressor to turn on when the pressure in the tank drops below 125 psi. And then once the pressure climbs above 155 psi, it sends another signal to the compressor telling it to turn off. This way, the tank pressure is automated and it only fills up with air when it needs to. The other sensor simply sends a signal to the gauges so that I can display the tank pressure. If you haven't noticed yet, I'm running all of the air lines into the driver's side glove box. That's where I've decided to install the valve manifold. I plan on driving this thing through some pretty deep water, so I wanted it as high and dry as possible. Now, for everybody's least favorite part, the wiring. Call me crazy, but I actually enjoy this part of my builds. It might actually be my favorite. But I won't bore you with too many details here. I'll just go ahead and put up my wiring diagram that I drew that shows exactly how I have it wired right now. But keep in mind that the rest of this cart is not wired at the moment. So this wiring is somewhat temporary. I will have to tie it in with the rest of the cart once I get to that point, but for now, I just installed a universal fuse block with a toggle switch in place of an ignition switch. This gauge was pretty much plug and play. The only wires I had to actually run were ignition, power, and ground. Everything else that you see me plugging in are the sensors coming from the valve manifold. I really like this gauge a lot because instead of having a separate gauge for each wheel, this one small gauge shows the pressure for all four corners and also the air tank. And best of all, it was pretty cheap. I still don't quite know where I'm going to put it, so for now, it's going in the cup holder. So we have the fuse block wired up, the relay wired up, the negative battery cable going to the frame, compressor wired up, gauges wired, controller wired, now all we need to do is turn it on, wait for it to reach 155 psi, and see if it shuts off automatically. Now 
Now this controller controls the whole air ride system. Each corner button controls each corner wheel. Each center button controls each pair. So this front center button controls the pair of front wheels. This middle button controls both back wheels at the same time. This middle button controls both left wheels. This middle button controls both right wheels. This controls all the wheels at the same time. <clears throat> so if I wanted to let the front down, I could use this button, press the down button, and it will lower the front. And to raise it back up, I press the up arrow. Same thing for the rear, press the down. Press up. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please hit that like button. Tell me what you think about it in the comments. Don't forget to hit subscribe, hit that bell icon so you'll be notified whenever any new videos get uploaded. Share this video with your friends, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.